Hello, I'm Nancy Clanton, president of Clanton & Associates, a lighting engineering firm in Boulder, Colorado. Um, I was also the chairperson of the joint task force that developed the model lighting ordinance with two organizations, International Dark Sky Association and the Illuminating Engineering Society of North America. It was really critical that those two associations work together to develop this model lighting ordinance because International Dark Sky Association brings in the environmentally sensitivity and why we need a model lighting ordinance. And IES brought in the technical side that you could actually develop a model lighting ordinance and still meet the technical requirements for lighting. In this presentation, I'm going to go over several different items um, as far as how the ordinance was developed and some guidelines and what was used for the model lighting ordinance. The first technical memorandum 15 that was developed by IES actually took of how a luminaire distribution, light distribution is displayed. And how do we rate them? How do we classify those luminaires? So that we begin to understand on how much uplight, glare, and backlight that each luminaire has. Then we'll get into the model lighting ordinance overview. What does it mean? And go in depth into how it is and how it's applied. Then finally, we'll get into some MLO examples, looking at the prescriptive method and the performance method, and then some typical luminaires of what happens, what are the luminaires that we're used to, and how do they comply with the model lighting ordinance. Then finally, we're looking at additional MLO information, and how does the MLO relate to residential and or street lighting. So let's begin with the luminaire classification system. There was an older system that many of you may recognize as full cutoff, cutoff, and non-cutoff. Many ordinances have full cutoff in their ordinances and say could be as simple as all lighting should be full cutoff. That basically described the light distribution above the horizontal. In this picture, you can see that the light does not go above the horizontal, but all the light goes below it. So that technically was an old classification of full cutoff. We have now replaced that with an uplight classification. But the advantage of this new classification system is that we've added two more elements, backlight and glare which describes more with different cities of what you need. The other really important difference between the old system and the new is that full cutoff only talked about a percentage of light. So you could have like a thousand watt full cutoff luminaire and that may be what's classified, yet a small little decorative two watt Christmas tree light may have been non-cutoff because it was all percentage based. With TM15, we are now going with initial luminaire lumens. You take the light bulb, you put it inside a light fixture, and it's how much light or lumens comes out of that entire fixture. And that's really important because now we're talking about absolute number of light and not a percentage base. The other thing, when you're looking at city um, or applicants looking at their submittals, make sure that they never use what we call light loss factor. By doing initial luminaires, the light loss factor is going to equal one. So it's not maintained. This is the one thing that a lot of cities or people in review will miss that. Because if you say I'm designing some with a light loss factor of 0.7, the numbers on the paper look a lot lower than what it's going to be when you initially turn on the lights and when they get their certificate of occupancy. 
So light loss factor should be one. Here is kind of a description of how we can actually get into the specifics of TM15. If you look at this luminaire and do a photometric test of it, which basically is looking at light coming out, entire sphere around the luminaire, we will get amount of light out of these different angles, maybe 0 to 30, 30 to 60, and so forth, all the way to the top of the light. Is there any light coming in that upper low zone or the upper high zone? Notice that we do have light in the 90 to 100, I mean 100 degree zone. That was important because light coming out at that low angle actually contributes more to sky glow than light that's coming straight out of the top and going straight up. This makes sense because the atmosphere is thicker as you go horizontally than you would if you're going straight up. And so therefore, those limits of lumens is stricter than the one in the upper high zone. So specifically, we've got a B rating, which is a backlight rating, and that goes from zero to 80 degrees behind the luminaire or on the house side of the luminaire. Then we've got the U rating, which is the zone above and up above the, um, the horizontal line. And then the G rating. The G rating is higher angle light that actually would contribute to sky glow, but also at that atmosphere or the thickest part of the atmosphere, but it really contributes to glare or that light trespass shining in my window. Specifically, if we look at the B rating, we have under the different B ratings, B0, B1, B2, and so forth, we've got limits on how many absolute lumens you can have in each zone. So for instance, in this backlight low, which is 0 to 30 degrees, in order to get a B0 rating, that has to be below 110 lumens. And then we look at backlight medium and backlight high, all individually. They're not added up or anything. We look at each individually. And here's an example. Let's say that we have a luminaire with around 1,500 lumens. And we go across here. It's greater than 1,000 and less than 2,500. So it would have a rating of B3. But if we look at backlight medium, at about 5,200 lumens. Ooh, it didn't quite squeeze through the B3, so it's more of a B4 rating. And then the backlight low at 760 lumens, we have got probably a B2 rating. So we take the worst case out of these three, and that equals a B4 rating. And that's going to be the entire luminaire rating. And we'll do the same thing with uplight. We'll look at how much light is coming out of it at the different zones, the UH and UL. And again, it's going to be the worst of the three. So the luminaire rating for this particular one is a U3. The G rating. This depends a little bit on the distribution type of the luminaire. And this is horizontal distribution where in the TM15, we've been looking more at vertical distribution. Type 2, type 3, type 4, all of the luminaires that kind of push light out in one direction versus being symmetrical around has one type of G rating. If you're a symmetrical luminaire that you push light out in all directions equally, that's going to be a type 5 or like I mentioned, a symmetrical distribution. With these particular ones, with an asymmetric, which is a type 2, type 3, or type 4, we would have these particular G ratings for it. And we go through the exact same exercise. We get the photometric test. We look at the different zones, compare it individually with the ratings in each of these categories, 
and we look at the greatest one, and in this case, it's a backlight very high, is a G3, so that's the rating for the entire luminaire. This information is easily attainable from the manufacturers. Here's an example of a 1,000 watt luminaire that typically, if you look at it, it is a full cutoff luminaire. Notice that there's no uplight in either the UL zone or the UH zone. So a typical full uplight, full cutoff uplight, but look at, because it's a 1,000 watt, it's gonna be a B5, and a G5, extremely glaring and putting a lot of light in your neighbor's property. These type of files, you can actually determine the bug rating by having an IES photometric file and running it through many of the free software programs that are available to establish bug ratings. If not, ask your manufacturer specifically for this luminaire and for the light source in them. And they'll be able to provide the bug ratings. It should be in, on all the photometric data worksheets or cut sheets that you get from the manufacturer.